Hello everybody, so today, as you can probably tell by the camera, um, I'm just going to be doing a bit of an explanation on Venus flytrap flowers and how to pollinate them. So, as you can see in this picture, I've got two flytrap flowers. Now these are on the same stalk, so they're on the same plant, um, but it'll give you a good idea on the how the appearance of the flower changes throughout the throughout its lifespan. So. On the left, you can see um, this flower is a few days older than this one on the right. And you can see on a newly opened flower, the stone stamens, which are these long kind of spindly things with the little pollens on the top, um, they're kind of up and they've got pollen all over them as you can probably see. And then a few days later, this one on the right, the pistil in the middle, which is this little fuzzy thing, oops, this little fuzzy thing right here, um, opens up and kind of like shows itself and is receptive to pollen um, and you can see how it's not on the right and basically what this does for the plant is it prevents self-pollination and the reason that it doesn't want to self-pollinate every single time is just because the more self-pollination it does the less genetic variation its seeds have and that can lead to problems like disease or other you know, negative things with an entire population of something being very similar in genes. Um, so, just for example purposes, I'm just going to be selfing this one, but you can theoretically do this just with any flower you see. Um, so, what you do to pollinate is you'll want something like this. This is what I'm using, a tiny paintbrush. Um, you can probably use a Q-tip or something with just a nice fuzzy um, end. And what you want to do is you want to grab the pollen off these little anthers. So you can see even just a tiny touch will get this pollen on everything. It'll stick to everything. And then with that, you just tap the stamen, or sorry, the stigma on the pistil, which is the little white fuzzy thing. And as you can probably see, it's got a bit of pollen on it now. And you don't need much, you just need a little bit. Um, sorry for this duck or whatever is calling behind me. Um, but that's all you do. That is literally all it is for Venus flytrap flower. And you can repeat these for all the ones in your um, collection and whatnot. And yeah, that's just the basic idea for how you pollinate it. So now I'll just explain a bit about how to name the things that you have pollinated. So, um, basically, whenever you name things, you need to know if it's a cross or a self-pollination. Um, if it's a self-pollination like this, um, where they come from the same plant, you're just gonna name it whatever the cultivar is, X self. So this is just a typical, but say it was like a um, I don't know, a maroon monster, you're just going to do maroon monster x self. And that signifies that it's a maroon monster cross with itself, if it, sorry, with itself. Um, and say these two flowers for, from two different plants, you're going to have your female, which is the one you put the pollen on, um, first, and then your male, which is the one you take the pollen on, second. So say the left flower was from like a B52, and the flower on the right was from an Akairu, it would be B52 X Akairu. So female X male, where you put the pollen, X where you get the pollen. Um, and that's a really basic guide for it. It can get pretty complicated once you get into the long crosses, um, but that's a basic idea. Um, and something else that I wanna cons um, let you know about, uh, whenever you're making complex crosses uh, or expensive crosses especially, where you want to um, be absolutely certain with what you're crossing is what you're resulting in. You're gonna wanna get um, these bags to protect the flower from like external pollination from another plant. Um, so, and what these bags, they're usually called jewelry bags, but they'll just cover over the plant and prevent any pollen from getting in or any insects from pollinating it or anything like that. And that will basically just protect the flower from outside pollination. 
Um, so I'll leave some of those in the description, um, some that I've seen other people use. But for this, I'm just going to be pollinating these um, just to give them some seeds, just because they're all typicals in this little bog I've made. So that is all we have to do for today. Now you just give them a month roughly and we'll see what happens. All right, and this is a little less than a month later. So you can see that the petals have withered, fallen off, and the seed pods have gone green. And this is a good indicator of success. Um, now when they're unsuccessful, I've got a few here, um, you can see they go brown and they kind of wither. So just a side note, this just means that the majority of the seeds have failed. Now there can still be a few successful ones in there, so it's worth checking, um, but you'll get way more seeds from the green ones and that's what you're aiming for. So now you just want to wait for when they're actually ready to open. Um, so you can see with width is kind of a good indicator of time. So the newer seed pods are a lot skinnier and the older ones are wider. So as the seeds mature and get larger, the seed pod also gets larger. And what you want to look for is, um, of course, as they get wider, you want to be more ready to get them. But they'll also, once they're completely ready, the seed pod will go brown and it'll kind of dry. And you'll be able to see the seeds through or the seeds will be kind of exposed to the outside, so you'll be able to see them. Um, sometimes the flaps can cover them, but yeah, we'll see um, in the next part of this video what they look like. All right, so this is June 16th, which is two weeks after the last video segment. And as you can see, these seed pods have started to blacken and you can see some of them, I've actually missed the seeds. Um, so I wasn't super closely watching these, um, but as you can see, a good bit of them are still definitely seeding. And that's not too big of an issue because I was planning to actually plant most of them in here anyway. Um, but you can see, still got good bits of seed. And so now, I will go ahead and show you how to harvest them. So what you will need is a pair of scissors. And this is to actually cut these little seed pods off their... Um, individual stems just that they're easier to work with and these do not have to be sterile although um, you can if you'd like tweezers or some kind of hard instrument just to scratch the seeds off these seed pods just like this um, tweezers will work like I have or um, a toothpick or a stick so just anything like that and then of course some kind of container to hold your seeds in so you can see I've got that right here just put a little funnel in just to make it easier. And I've stuck that in the dirt just that I don't have to hold it and it frees up a hand. Um, and so now I will go ahead and show you how to harvest them. All right, so you can see I've cut off this guy by the stem and I'm just gonna take these tweezers and quite literally scratch the seeds off. They do come off quite easily. So this isn't much of an issue. And just like that, they're all off. And then you can just discard that seed pod. And I'll show you one more time with the new seed pod. So there's our new seed pod. And again, scratch it right over that funnel. And there you go. Um, so that is all you need to do. It's as simple as that, really. And there are the seeds. And of course, you can look up a Venus flytrap germination video on how you do that. Um, but the basics, and I might make a video of this in the future, I probably will at some point. But you do not need to stratify them like Cirrocenia seeds. You can just put them in a humid kind of media, and with a good bit of light, they'll sprout and they should do fine. So yeah, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.